Michael can talk about Xaml, APL, on the web, and stuff like that. And online, and then we'll listen. So, okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, well, this is the sort of topic I was talking about. Uh, basically, it also is separating um, your, uh, let's say, starting off. At the moment, if, if you want to use WKF and uh, Dialog APL and uh, data binding, it works very nicely under uh, Windows at the moment. But it is currently limited to Windows. However, there is this uh, product uh, which compiles C Sharp um, and XAML from WKF. Civil, civil life and also from the uh, universal uh, UWC as well into HTML, JavaScript and CSS files. And uh, so now it's actually possible to have any of these applications running not just on Windows, which is really, really quite good. Um, it's with the, uh, so traditionally how it works with uh, Dota at the moment, where you have the, uh, the XAML, which is basically the definition of the GUI, then you have some uh, black box uh, data binding that joins with your APL code. So all you need to know really is how to define how your screen looks and play around with namespaces and matrices at the other end. And you don't have to get involved in anything else in the middle. Um, and uh, that work, currently today works very well. And really, the concept is if you want to get in work over the internet, is just to have the black box straddle the two sides. So this side is your uh, client side, where um, your client is looking at the XAML that's been defined, and this side of your API is running on the server, and uh, you make changes to uh, namespaces and matrices here, and it should be a two-way process back and forwards. And uh, this seems rather nice because it means you don't know anything about HTML, you don't know anything about CSS, or any of these horrible things that API people don't like. You just need to know how to deal with namespaces, and you just need to have to define uh, WPF and XAML on the other side. And you don't even have to do XAML, you could play around with WPF objects in the workspace, build what you want, and then use write XAML out and create your XAML that way. So you can even get away with writing any markup with the XAML, you can just play in your APL workspace. And so basically what you do, these are basically just four simple steps. You create your XAML, as you would normally, um, and you specify some markups like date context and like this, define your namespaces to be used for date binding. And you have definitions, which is currently used as a left argument ID in 2015. So all you're saying basically is your um, uh, variables in your namespace, um, what data type they are, what name they have. That's all you need to specify. And then you can run a, 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 just an APL function that will analyze um, the XAML to determine the data binding needing in the data context. It can work out from the uh, type definitions in the uh, workspace, from the namespaces, the uh, class it needs. Then the rest is all just to be built and compiled by command lines and things like this, all behind the scenes. And then all you have to do is send the output uh, to the website, and you're ready to, to work, basically. Um, and the platforms you can run on, I have been working at the moment with a MISO and my socket um, using localhost. Um, you can also uh, use the IIS with a um, my socket behind. Um, or later when uh, Conga has been uh, upgraded to uh, support uh, web sockets, then you can use IS8, 10, and the latest Apache, and use reverse proxy, and have a very small uh, web ser um, socket server behind. And it will display on Windows, Linux browsers, as long as they support web sockets. You can actually, with the uh, compiler, you can actually just generate a mobile app, and so you don't even need um, a browser, you just supply it uh, in the uh, app stores to uh, supply that way. And also you can have Windows clients supporting the standard WF.net. And you can all work, work together using the server behind. I say at the moment it's, it's proof of concept. I have got a demo to show you a simple one working. But this is basically how it's, it works. You have the client side and the server side. The darker area is the bit you see. So if you want to see the sound of the code here, the bits in the light colors are the hidden plumbing. But basically what happens is, you have a XAML, which um, you then have a class, which does data binding here. You have web topic passing data back and forth. You have data binding here to the APL code there. And so all the APL user has to see is the APL code there, and the XAML has to And the process flows through like that. Um, and this is just a brief, there is actually a page, a moment, um, I haven't tried more than one or two people playing with it, 
But there is hl7.com that's actually running at the moment that has actually got that. I can actually, I think, I found my glasses. It is actually running. This is this is all um, very simple stuff. This is still in beta test, so none, nothing's been optimized. It just proves that it actually works. And here, if I come up here and type. So I've got to read with oh, I've got to something. That's in. That's in. That's in. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Oh, good. That's it. Right. Um, so here, I've just got a very simple screen. I'll show you an example in a minute. And I'm just typing in things here, and you'll see that it's responding to things I'm typing there, like so. And if I look at another variable, so on. Yeah. And then if I go back, this is actually on uh, my uh, server over here. This is running here, hopefully. So if I type in here, Hash dot uh, data running. Uh -huh. Oops. Uh, okay. You see that? No. No. <laughs> I just cut here. Yeah. Yeah. So and then say here uh, dot name uh, gets uh, yeah that uh, table uh, a. You see how to change and go back. Now it's across the internet and back again. Um, so and again I can put it. And also if I go up here and type this is table C. I get information there. If I come back to the HL workspace, hopefully, if I look at data in any way, hopefully, that was good luck. It wasn't working yesterday. But you see how, how easy it is to work with this. You've just got a namespace here, and with a code here, and you've got the name there. And this is actually now working over a computer in Canary Wharf. It's working quite nicely back and forth. And so that's basically. It's a very boring demonstration, really. And then if I come and show you the Visual Studio. Right. Now, this isn't the actual one that's running. The one that's running is this. Uh, all right. Uh, then how do I? No, I can't. Now, how do I change the font size? Do you... Yeah. Oh, yeah, all right, I'll do. <laughs> oh, no, all right, excellent. Right. So this is, this is, this is uh, the one that's actually, oh, actually this one is, this is, uh, this is the example. The actual one that's running is this one here. Because at the moment I'm having to handcraft because I haven't written that function. You'll see that that's in the, right. I don't know how you guide these things. Yeah, right. So this is the actual XAML that's being done. For that. As I say, this could be built using objects and then just written with another thing, but basically this is it. So again, all I'm saying is that um, I've got a, a stack panel. And I've got a grid which is orange, which you can see. 
See there? And my grid definitions, I've got an image, which is my MGH software. Then I've got down here um, a text block, which has got the name, and that's got binding to a title. And then further down, I've got a binding to a name, which has a two-way dialog backs and forwards. And uh, I've got another binding for the data, which is got a light blue background and so forth. So that, that is my XAML. Now, that's the one that is running at the moment. That's the one that's, that's hard-coded because I haven't written the make function. But the one that will be working soon will be this one. And you'll see the only difference is that I've added this data context here. So that's basically saying that that should actually, for the example I'm doing, should be data binding rather than APL data, but it gives you the name class that I'm linking to on the other side. So that's all you have to specify to get the binding working. You basically specify the name of the name space on that side, you can specify in different places, and that will actually connect through, and then the binding works. And again, I've got this another markup here called APL file, which would identify the file and allow you to find the uh, image for that. And so these are the only, these are, these are just markups, again, standard um, XAML, uh, WPF.net stuff. And this all gets compiled by this, this product into uh, JavaScript, HTML5, and CS, CSS files. And then you can export that. So no C Sharp, no XAML goes over to the client, only pure JavaScript, HTML5, HTML5 and CSS. So all this, when, I, when you start working, the only thing that's working there was APL, HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. That's it's uh, with data binding. So again, it's, it's static. Oh, well, it's, it's just a, it's a screen. So it, it is, um, and, but it can, it, you can make any calls out to JavaScript with it. You can actually um, create other things in your data binding, so it's not static. Yeah, I mean, uh, with the exception of data binding, it's static. It, uh, as far as they, from, the APL. from the APL point of view at the moment, however, um, I also will be adding events and commands to this to do the same thing, so it could be exactly the same as WPF on the uh, thing, because it's very easy to simulate events and commands on the other side. So the, I already know how to do that, I haven't written it yet. Um, in fact, all it would require is, you see what the APL colon file is, it, it is it's already working in the WPF, if you have APL colon command and the command in there for the, in the command point, that would then work. Um, and it will then also work with commands and events in the uh, APL. And you can also specify if you know any C-sharp, to have it locally as well. So you could, you could have it working either way, because you can actually, if you know your C-sharp, you can actually add C-sharp to, uh, to the code before it's compiled, and then you get events locally as well. So you have the choice. Okay, but so in APL, it's all been done with that. And it's all sending some data streams back to your website, Exactly. Are, exactly. your own service either. No, I, I mean, you'll see the acknowledgements at the end. I've actually uh, used uh, something done by Gil. Uh, which is a moment based on my server, but that's only because that's the only one I've got that works at the moment in APL. Uh, once Vaughan gets his Conga WebSockets working, it can be a very, very light, slim yeah. WebSocket server just based on Conga, nothing yeah. else. You're not really using my server, yeah. No, 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 I'm just using it because it, 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 Gil has already converted, that's why I'm putting it my socket rather than my server. But it can run with my server and alongside my server. The local host version I have on here is being served up completely by my server, and you can intermix the my server pages with this as well. So you, you can you can do whatever you like. You can do all my server or no my server completely, depending on what you want to work with. <laughs> and so, so all you have to do is, is that if you don't like doing this XAML, you can actually build it using standard WPF objects in a workspace using the standard .NET bridge. And then once you've got your, your you've played around with that. You can then just use the write XAML command in uh, WPF, which will just write out the XAML for you, and that will give you your static copy of whatever you're playing with. The binding isn't limited just to file names and to things. You can actually change the size, to position, all of these things. And so you can actually move your objects around using this as well. No, no, this works on Apache. The, 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 the only thing you require Microsoft for is to build it, because you need C, the C Sharp compiler. But everything else runs, and this also they provide the package to package this up onto a. There is an application at the moment they've got this example running on uh, Apple, I think, and on Android. And you, 
that they, they actually allow you to access into an You don't even need a browser on the client end. You can just manage on the phone as well. Um, and uh, it, works, it works really quite nicely. So that's what you need at that end. Um, and, and then that, this is the only bit you have to know on this side. And then the whole thing, you would analyze this and you would look to see which data context you needed, and you then know which namespace is in the ATL workspace. You could then look at the data definition, and you could build all these classes behind. They could then be compiled. You wouldn't see any of that, and you can then just work the namespace again. So the only thing an ATL person would have to do is handle that XAML for the objects to build the XAML, and and the um, and the namespaces at the other end. And I say it, this is a very simple example. Like I, I haven't got much. I've just got a text box and various bits and pieces. But this, this is all working quite nicely through WebSockets. Um, oh? Yeah. I'm just yeah. So, but I mean, if you want to try this, you can try the ATLserver.com. I haven't. Because again, you see, this is quite nice because you have sessions as well. Because if I go back here, at the moment, you notice I was using a one there. I don't know if anybody else is using it yet. No, no, no. I'm just using triggers. It's just using triggers. It's only, it's only me logged on at the moment. But if, if another person in theory, I mean, I haven't, I haven't tested this, in theory, if another person logged on to this as a guest, I would get that would be row two. So if anybody else would like to go on to atlserver.com. Yeah, I'm there. No, it could work. Oh, then obviously there's a bug in my code. I thought it would work. Sorry. Uh, it probably doesn't work here now. Uh, that, that should add another. It worked yesterday. I was very confident it would work. Oh, this is, this is a proof of concept. This is pure proof of concept. It's nothing more than that. I mean, I mean, this is all good, but mine's still working, so I'm surprised it's... Oh. The mine's still working, so I would have thought... Second one would have come in. See the button says website, but it says website closed, and there has been a problem, and, and it's closed down the socket. Because as soon as I close down the workspace, that will go to that state will go to website. I mean, I can show you that now. Don't look quite what's gone wrong with yours. But if I close this down, uh -huh. go on. right? Then see it's gone to website closed because the connection's gone. If I restart it, uh, that one there. And go up here and we start it. Yeah, and then refresh this. That's quite nasty. So basically that, that that's that's how all that uh there. I want to go back to how do I continue? So again, that, that's a, that, I thought it did work, but I, I, that'll be working by tomorrow, hopefully. But anyway, these are the acknowledgements I have to give because the uh, WebSocket server was adapted for my server. It was done by Gil. I had to sort of adapt it a bit, but basically most of it was working. I also, Vaughan gave me some help. With, he's shown me the model for Conga. And again, I don't think that's quite ready yet, but hopefully Conga will be doing that very quickly, very soon. And then the other people are the people who are providing. Again, this is still in beta. This won't be a... They say a product for commercial use until Christmas, but they're, they're on beta 8 at the moment. They give a release every six weeks or so. Um, and I think I did have that on the show somewhere. Oh, that one there. Mm. No. Is it Control Plus? Do I make it bigger? How do I make it bigger? Oh, it's so good. Not so this is basically the company, um, and the moment they claim that they have 99, oh, why is it not gone? So they claim that they've got 99% of the C-sharp features, 7% of the XAML, and the rest of it, and again, this is, and they're fairly active with their um, digital things they're supporting at the moment. And they have been fairly on spot with all their uh, um, but betas. Um, I'm waiting for the next one because there's some things in there that I want as well. 
Um, and all this is basically free except for this compiler. This compiler is in theory free, but the web sockets you need to win this work, and I think the JSON, which at the moment I'm using strings to pass this back and forth, um, but these people are implementing JSON on the uh, C sharp side. Um, it's coming, I think, in the next beta release, which hopefully will be in June. Um, and then I'll be able to have JSON on both sides, and then I will be able to pass types as well more easily. At the moment, I'm making it, that's why the formatting of the arrays is not very nice, because I'm only using strings at the moment, back and forth, and using so on. Um, but uh, come mid year, I'm hoping that they'll have a JSON um, module on the uh, XAML side, if you like, um, so then I can get JSON being passed back and forth on the web sockets. Um, and so uh, that will be much more flexibility on data types. Um, but, but basically their prediction is that they will be, um, I think it's uh, early 2017, they're, they're, they're predicting that their product will be robust and solid. But I'm finding already that it's, it, it works very nicely. Um, it's uh, C sharp uh, HTML5.com. CS, sorry, CS. CSHTML5.com. I've been telling you about it all oh, year. <laughs> but it allows an APL person to know nothing about the web at all. All you have to know about is how to build some XAML, and you can do that from objects in the workspace, which we're already happy dealing with, and namespaces on the uh, on the APL side. And you can get the whole the rest of the plumbing can be built um, from that information. So although you have to do the physical compilation, it's just a CMD command in the middle of an APL piece of code or something. So uh, all the all the plumbing is is um, is very easily done. Uh, let me get this back now. Uh, Do you have any idea? Huh? You said it's mostly free, but... You have to pay for the compiler part. It is free. The compiler itself is free. But if you want to use some of the pro features, um, the uh, web sockets is one of the items, which obviously is important for this. You have to buy the pro version. And I think the retail price is going to be $499. However, at the moment, if you buy it, because it's in beta, I think it costs you $40, and then that's valid for two or three years afterwards. For, so you can buy it at 10 percent, you know, 10, uh, at a tenth of the price. Um, but but because you need the WebSocket section, you have to buy their pro. You can use the free Visual Studio Express version. You can use APL. Obviously, you have to be a license for APL, um, and then you have to have the compiler. And the compiler, they say. It's four hundred ninety nine dollars is the price um, for the thing, but while it's in beta, they say you can get it for forty nine or thereabouts. Ninety nine. Oh right. But uh, I, I, I don't. I haven't looked into what the details are, but uh, but you have to buy the pro version to get the WebSocket section. So, but that, oops, let's go back. I need to go back to. So those say so those acknowledgements of people helped, and these are things I still have to do. I mean, these are very small. That is that when Kong is available, really, or I'm going to try and cut down the my a bit. Then this is the actual make. Say my demo at is handcrafted, but it can all be done with a, a, a standard make function. Um, then there's the callbacks, events, and commands. Again, I know how to do it. I haven't written it yet. Um, they're also they have been incredibly, obviously, a very good relationship with the use of people. They're doing some very nice things. When I need something for APL, they, they seem quite willing. And also, the Sync Fusion people are looking at, there is a, another option in the Pro that allows you to put a wrapper around um, WPS controls that are written by third parties and in making the JavaScript objects run as if they were um, the C-sharp ones. So you can use all of the Sync Fusion, I think, Teleric commands, those ones, although the plan is they will be available using this. Um, say, Sync Fusion, I've got looking at doing it, and they, they seem quite keen on, on trying to put the wrapper around. So hopefully, in another year, they will also have the wrappers around the WPF objects that you can buy from third party controls. You can also, uh, even now, actually call any of the jQuery um, controls and all those if you know how to run JavaScript. But I don't, so well, I can't. <laughs> 
but, uh, but hopefully the uh, the uh, the uh, .NET ones will be available in this mechanism as well. Apparently, there's a small app where they put that and just define the properties and uh, methods and things. So those are things I still have to do. I'm hoping that uh, if I get uh, invited to talk at the uh, conference uh, in Glasgow, then I shall have all these things working by then. That's my plan. And that's it. So, any questions? I think it's rather cool, though. I'm rather pleased with that. I think it's uh, yeah. I mean, about the, the server end of it.